So WeWork was a great startup that offered shared workspaces and had a great CEO called Adam Newman, and they raised over 20 billion. He was on the cover of Forbes and everything was perfect until it wasn't. There were reports of harsh working environments in WeWork, like forcing employees to eat plant-based meals only to aid the environment, while their CEO purchased a private jet for $60 million that he frequently used. Then in 2010, they started preparing to go public, and when they did that, they had to show some of their financials. Apparently, they were losing a lot of money, and Adam Newman himself was using the corporate credit card for his personal expenses. He was then replaced as CEO, but before he left, the Wall Street Journal reports that he withdrew around $700 million from WeWork. Even though this was one of the biggest scandals of all startups, Adam Newman is now a billionaire with a net worth of $2.2 billion. They even made a series about it. But as a business consultant, I was wondering how WeWork got back on their feet. Adam Newman resigned in September of 2019, and then WeWork released an investor deck in October of 2019, and then raised around $6.8 billion. I think it's a beauty, but let's take a look and analyze. All right, WeWork. Yep. And yeah. Okay, so the first thing to keep in mind is that this deck is not designed for a seed investment or so. So they had a good design team. They had a good team in general. So it looks like there's a lot of effort put into this presentation. They start with a clean design of their logo with investor presentation and a huge disclaimer. They are a big startup at that time. So it kind of makes sense that they have to be very legally protected. And then they start immediately talking about their company. Now, in these two slides, slide three and four, it's mostly traction. So they're just showcasing what they have and they were a very established startup. So it's just numbers mainly. We have 600 locations, 676 desks in 122 cities in 32 different countries and so on. This just shows, you know what? We're not children, we're here for the big game. The next slide would be key principles. Now my theory is that they had to put this at the beginning because let's be serious and address the elephant in the room. Adam Newman was just out of uh, WeWork because of a scandal. How are you going to prevent this from happening again? Or how are you going to improve the corporate culture that you have? So that's why they started saying key, key principles here. And then their evolution in terms of the focus, the product, the market experience, strategy and everything. So this sort of thing just showcases that WeWork is not about Adam Newman. It's much more than that. Then they have a 90 day game plan because this was before an IPO. So they had to show them that they're improving very recently and that their growth is going to continue. Then the upcoming six slides are just traction, purely traction. Again, this is an established startup. So why don't you show us your numbers? Because you want us to buy your stock when you launch, uh, when you go public with an IPO. So from slide eight to slide 14 down, you'll see that it's mostly just numbers and statistics about memberships, percentages, revenue. All of that is just in those slides and they are my favorite because traction is king, as they might say. So where we are, the global network and brand, the scale, the member centric, focusing on memberships to show the business model, solutions for companies of all sizes. They're trying to get a lot of their target segment wants to expand, not just people with big number of employees like enterprises, but also small businesses and medium businesses. And uh, it shows also some statistics in terms of how we're being flexible for all sorts of real estate options, which is, which is just showcasing, you know what, we are a good product because investors were worried about the scalability of WeWork because at the end of the day, it's, it's a place that offers workspaces. It's not a startup like Facebook or Meta, just a software company. It's more of a place that is brick and mortar or a company that focuses on something that exists right here at that moment. So scalability was questionable. Our members grow with us. Beautiful, beautiful slide. Just showcasing that they having been increasing in terms of memberships, putting it all together, executing our global playbook. And they are showing that they are decreasing in terms of costs in general, and they are increasing in terms of location openings. So in terms of numbers, they're just showing we're good because this was just released after the fact that they started to show their financials and it was below expectations. They were spending a lot of money. And finally, they close this detailed traction aspect 
by just saying the occupancy rate and the location contribution margin and etc. So they're just, you know, showcasing numbers here and the whole deck is going to be more of the same. They're just showing numbers in the whole deck. So this was the detailed traction aspect of it. Then they start talking about the business model and I very much like the next slide. The business model is going to continue from here for at least three slides or four slides, but they showcase it as if they're explaining it to a child. If we rent a location for $45, then if we monetize the location at 2.2 or 2.5 our lease cost, and if we run this location with $25, then this location is going to generate, etc. So they're just taking it step and making it very simple to understand. Then there is the revenue building blocks. So they show the run rate revenue and how they're expanding also over the years. And the occupancy is a big deal because you could, you know, they could have a lease to a big real estate option and they couldn't have a lot of occupancy or the rate of occupancy is not good enough so they would be losing but they have an 80 percent total occupancy which is very good then they close the business model by showing how they're making money or the membership revenue as well as the building costs just a small brief of what's happening they're going to probably say more tabular elements downstairs of the whole financials but for now they're just getting get, giving them a brief of what it is finally they close the deck from slide 19 to 24 by saying how they intend to optimize because it's all about the future now and this is very important because if you're an investor and you want to put your money in WeWork, you need to know how they're going to expand. So they started to talk about how they're optimizing their fleet, drivers of location contribution margin and how they're intending to do this over the years, as well as the growing base of strong recurring cash flow as locations mature, there are non-mature and there are mature locations, a bunch of details that only people who are very interested in investing would really look into. But aside from that, it just showcases, you know what, we're statistical and we have what it takes and this is the future, this is what the future holds. Consistent execution, location, occupancy, they're just saying how the occupancy is at mature and non-mature locations. By mature, they mean the locations that have been running for over 24 months. And they show the memberships of each of each occupancy rate. Statistical, but it just shows that there is a business behind it and that they are going to grow in the future and they have good occupancy in general, especially in mature locations. Then slide 23 and 24, they continue talking more about it, location occupancy, non-mature, and how it is if they're open from four to six months, less than three months, seven, 12 months, etc. And they close this whole optimization plan by so showing that they are increasing or driving significant revenue and that's what really the whole thing is about we want to know if they are having an increased revenue and they're just showing that memberships and revenue and the commitment length is increasing if you look at those three charts you go like oh okay so they're expanding in terms of everything so the revenue is going to keep on growing so i would say this is the end of the pitch deck now there is an appendix with a lot more information a lot more statistics if you're interested in it i won't dig deep into it i'll attach a link to the description of this video that shows the whole deck if you're really interested in looking at the appendix it's just more definitions more tables more statistics in case people are really interested in investing a big amount of money and they want to really review or the financial analysts maybe would really review all these tables and all these informations but aside from that, that was the pitch deck of WeWork after the Newman scandal. Overall, it's a great deck that says the following. We are a great startup. We have very good growth and traction. Forget about the XCO's problem. We have a very strong team. And finally, we're going public very soon. This is one of the most statistical decks that I've seen or that I've analyzed. And that's why I like it very much. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. This was part of Wednesday of Entrepreneurship. I hope you had a wonderful day. And if not, go have a wonderful day right now. It's still the beginning of the day, isn't it? Have fun.